Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I'm going to give you my quick take on Seven Artisans $479-463 gram full frame manual focus only super duper ultra wide angle lens in Leica L mount, their 9mm f5.6. Although Seven Artisans does offer it in Sony E, Nikon Z, and Canon RF mounts as well. Bottom line, all it took was one image this image to make me grudgingly admit that in spite of it being nothing special to look at, nothing special to have in hand, nothing special about the build or image quality. There will be times, especially in urban landscape, which is my jam, when there is utility for a lens this wide. There is utility in trading off maximum aperture for compact dimensions and relatively light weight. Ditto, trading off autofocus for the exact same things. And there is utility in trading off build quality, industrial design, and image quality to create a cost-effective, easy-to-carry, sufficiently optically performant lens capable of capturing notable imagery. Yeah, right, not exactly a ringing endorsement, but I am trying very hard to see this lens from multiple perspectives. It's not easy for me, but that lack of enthusiasm is because across a series of images I took the same day, I just couldn't find the kind of image quality I want, the kind of image quality I require for my work if I'm taking the time to schlep a pile of gear for hours on end to capture images worthy of hanging in our home. All of which leaves us where precisely? Well, how about here? The primary question, my issues aside, is this. For what use cases does it make sense to employ a lens like this, never mind this particular lens itself? I can imagine, for example, a number of us concluding interior shots are a primary use case. I'm not so sure. Although the lack of autofocus wouldn't be a big thing, figure on a pretty static frame, nor would the maximum aperture of f5.6 be particularly troublesome. I figure you're bringing lighting. I'd rate any full frame lens of this field of view beyond the pale for most commercial real estate applications on the basis of extreme edge distortion alone. That is the nature of the beast. Although, hey, I'm no commercial real estate photographer, and if you are and have worked with this particular field of view before, I'd love to learn what you think down in the comments section below. Could it be interesting for sports photographers, say, mounted atop or behind the goal on a soccer field or ice hockey rink, triggered via remote control camera? It could be the sense of intimacy, speed, and violence of either game might be heightened by the distortion in this particular case, perhaps add welcome drama to the frame. Although, I imagine something like a dedicated action cam from GoPro, DJI, or Insta360 might make more sense, more easily mounted, more weather resistant, in some instances an even wider field of view, likely less expensive. I mean, I know some of them are. And if need be, perhaps a more acceptably priced write-off if getting the shot meant sacrificing the lens and camera itself. But again, not my area of expertise. So if it is yours, please do weigh in down in the comments section below. What about traditional landscape? 
you know, I don't think a field of view this wide is critical. Unless it's all about the clouds, but maybe not even then. Might not a focal length somewhere between, say, 12 and maybe up to 21 millimeters, for example, accomplish the same sense of awe while offering greater versatility? Wouldn't many of today's modern autofocusing lenses offer the weather ceiling, which the Seven Artisans 9mm f5.6 does not? Why, yes. Yes, they would. You know the drill by now. Not my thing yet again. So if traditional landscape is your thing, and once more with feeling you've had experience with that particular field of view, I'd like to read about it in the comments section. In summary, I think there are focal lengths far better suited for pretty much everything, from architecture to sports, landscape, and while we're at it, travel, general purpose, or classic street photography too. Ditto for Astro, where critical sharpness and a very fast maximum aperture make a big difference. Think Sigma's Il Monstro 14mm f1.4 DGDN art, much more expensive, I grant you. Ditto for Macro, in spite of a minimum focusing distance of just 8 inches, which is impressive. There's simply no scenario among the things we do where I wouldn't much prefer, for example, Panasonic's 100mm f2.8 macro. It's simply much better as a macro lens for our use cases, a much more functional and versatile optic with tremendous image quality. In fact, I think the best and highest use of a lens like this, and the reason why I said yes in the first place when seven artisans asked me to give it a go, I mean, give them credit, they keep coming back, is actually for urban landscape. The combination of narrow streets and tall buildings for which this field of view and maximum aperture are especially well suited means that in daylight anyway, the slow maximum aperture of f5.6 is not a negative, nor is the lack of autofocus. And at night, have a tripod and it's good. This latter point rests upon this fact, which I suspect many of us don't even think about. The hyperfocal distance on the street for a full frame nine millimeter rectilinear lens. That is the distance at which everything between infinity and the minimum focusing distance one requires for a particular composition at a particular aperture, say, in this case, the maximum aperture of the lens, f5.6, comes at just two feet. And frankly, I personally have never framed a shot of a tall building across the street where I also need something sharp just inches from the plane of focus. Yet this very same calculation is what leaves me so, call it lukewarm at best, about the lens itself. This is the second question. Is the Seven Artisans 9mm f5.6 good enough at what it does for the people who need what it does to recommend it? On the one hand, the problem for me is that zone focused at any distance, I was simply unable to get the kind of critical, clinical sharpness I want for urban landscape. Lens character for this scenario? Please, it just doesn't meet any standards for anything I hold dear in a lens. Image quality, first and foremost, build quality, industrial design, joy in hand. I mean, give me a break. Hard stop for infinity is well beyond the index on the lens barrel, and I don't think thermal characteristics play any role in that. It costs less than 500 bucks. You can tell I'm struggling with this too, because while 500 bucks is not chump change for most of us, I cannot think of another L mount or E mount lens at anywhere near the price about which I am less enthused. Yeah, I can't. On the other hand, for Instagram, one could argue, and I am inclined to agree, my reservations about the lens don't really matter. And that is because we're talking about an image size, typically less than six square inches, viewed from at least a foot away, and A, only a lens this wide could have given me the room to then edit the crap out of that image, push and pull it all over the place to even approximate what I was after. B, it's not like there are a lot of other options out there at the specific field of view that are significantly better. And C, it is inexpensive enough for some of us to give it a go. Again, 
especially if we're only posting to social media. All of which, in the end, leaves us here. Seven artisan lenses and I have yet to click, no pun intended, yet I might consider the 9mm f5.6, the first seven artisans lens I'm willing to consider at all, if I were doing reportage. This is a use case for which I know image quality of the kind I look for is simply unnecessary. Then again, I'd want it weather sealed. Might even want a rear filter holder, since a filter holder in front of the lens is infeasible given that bulbous front element. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Too much futzing. No joy in Mudville. The lens just doesn't resonate with me. The thing of it is, I know. I've talked about this often enough in the past. That some of the greatest photographs of all time weren't sharp at all. Then again, none of those great shots were buildings. For urban landscape in particular, I love Margaret Burke White's early industrial photography in Pittsburgh, for example, but personally, my eyes swings modern, even if my emotional satisfaction comes from something more old school. Then again, think of the architectural photography enjoyed by Frank Lloyd Wright. I'd much rather let atmospheric conditions obscure a detailed view of buildings rather than be limited by the lens itself. And if I captured an urban landscape where the image was all that and a bag of potato chips, substance, composition, lighting, information, and emotion in service of a story, I know I'd want to blow it up and put it on a wall unhindered by compromised optics. If not in my own home, because it's not that big, then in a gallery with the implicit invitation to the viewer to come right up to it, immerse one's self in it, to learn, feel, enjoy, maybe act. I think there are much better options out there if one is willing to compromise by just a few millimeters at that bottom end. But hey, that's just me. Your mileage may vary, and as always, that's fine. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That's a big one and an easy one because it's free and more than two thirds of you don't. And or join the conversation in the comments section below because this is an exceptionally knowledgeable and generous audience. If you want to learn more about our street photography workshops, streets of New York, streets of Paris, Berlin, or Tokyo, custom private photo walks in New York City only, or want to explore private Zoom sessions for portfolio reviews, gear selection, and the like, no travel required, hop over to www.3bmep.com. Finally, please consider supporting our work by joining us here on YouTube, purchasing official Three Blind Men and an Elephant swag, dropping us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially, by becoming a patron over on Patreon, all links down below. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.